It is another Illini postgame show from No One Asked Us. I'm Craig Choate. That is the Logan Lee. Uh, thank you for joining us. Illinois falls at home to Ohio State, 86-83 on Thursday night. We are coming to you about five minutes after the game concluded. Um, debated on whether or not to do a show tonight, but um, thought we already set the precedent. We can't run away from the losses. So so here we are. Um, follow us on Twitter, at No One Asked Us Pod, at Craig W. Choate, at the Logan Lee. We also have a Gmail account if you want to reach out to us, No One Asked Us 2021 at gmail.com. Um, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and a subscribe down below. We would really, really appreciate it on Apple and Spotify, wherever you're listening. Get your podcast rate and review for us. That would be much appreciated and really help us out if you're here. One more click. It's all I need to do. Hit the thumbs up button below in the video on YouTube. Um, like I said, Illinois loses 86-83. It was um, not pretty for about 15 of the 40 minutes from the last five minutes of the first half to the uh, through the first 10 to 15 minutes of the second half. Not pretty. So we'll just set the stage here real quick. Um, it's probably going to be a quick post-game show, but, but we're going to get one out to you. So, Logan, um, Yes. Mood has changed. Mood has changed in the last 15 real time minutes. Yeah. Because Illinois did make this a game. So yeah. How does that change what you think when we were talking about not even doing a show because Illinois was down by 15? Um, I didn't really say much on Twitter tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> One of us at least. Um, I, there was just a point where I could do nothing but scroll through and just see so much negativity. Yeah. And I'm just like. I, I, and I even I have a friend that will probably listen to this that even made a very negative comment about this team, and I'm like, that's let's let's stop let's stop overreacting. Uh, that was a bad stretch of basketball. Uh, that's something this team has been known to do. I am not going to sit here and try to tell you that this team is perfect um, or that this team is Final Four bound or anything like that. Um, they needed this win if they wanted to win the Big Ten title. Obviously, they didn't get it, and that's probably not going to happen now. Uh, but that's fine. I think there are, there are far more important things on the horizon. Um, I think you can, you can, you're still certainly playing for seating, uh, and everything else, but yes, had the game gone as it was, uh, during that rough stretch in time. And this ended up being like a 20 point game. Uh, this would be a very different vibe. Um, but we, we saw what this team is uh, at the beginning of this game and at the end of this game. It was just, as you mentioned, the 15 or so minutes in the middle that it cost them. It, it absolutely cost them the game. Um, this was far and away probably Kofi Coburn's worst game that he's probably ever played in the last two years at least. Um, we can say what we want about officiating, and I know that that had something to do with it, but that wasn't all of it. Uh, it I feel better. I do feel better about how the game ended. Granted, it's still a home loss. You can't afford to have those, um, especially in a game that you probably could have and should have won. Uh, but you do feel better about how it ended. Um, as sad as it is and as discouraging as it still is um, and disheartening. I mean, it's one of those situations where would you rather get blown out or would you rather lose in a heartbreaker? Uh, and both of those things were very much in play <laughs> yeah. uh, about 15 or 20 minutes ago. Um, so you take what you get. Um, it's a loss. It's a home loss. It's not good, but you got to, got to take the positives out of it. And the way they, the way they fought, they fought back um, without Kofi, without Brad Underwood it was impressive. It was, it was definitely impressive. Yeah. A um, couple of things you touched on there that we'll get into, but uh, we'll run through the stats real quick. Yeah. I kind of covered a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where's points? I can't find the points here. Where the hell is points scored? What do you oh, want? It was it was hidden. Um, Alfonso Plummer leads Illinois with 26 points. Jacob Grandison has 14. Trent Frazier has 12. Kofi Coburn has 12. Coleman Hawkins has 10. Curbelo with 7. Demonte Williams with 2. Um, leading rebounder was Coleman Hawkins with 4. And then we had 1, 2, 3, 5 guys with 3. A couple guys with 2. Uh, Trent has four assists. Carvello has three. Grandison has three. Um, Alfonso Plummer did go eight for 10 from behind the arc. He tied the program record for single game. Six of those came in the first half. He tied with D Brown, Trent Frazier. Uh, there were two like others. Four, and four names were, on the list. Right? There was, there was four. So there's five now that have yeah. hit eight threes in a game for Illinois. 
Um, Brandon Paul, I think, was on the list. Brandon Paul was on the list. You're, you're right. Ohio State led by Malachi Branham. He had 31. EJ Liddell <laughs> had 21. And Kyle Young had 18. So three guys did most of their damage um, for the Buckeyes. This game was, what did I have? 80. No, it was 74 to 62 or something like that. 60. I don't know. It was uh, Illinois ended the game on a 25 to 12 run to make it a um, three point loss. It was a 15 point game with 5:30 left in the game, and Illinois stormed absolutely stormed back out of nowhere. Um, Brad Underwood got ejected his first ejection as Illinois head coach. He picked up a T. Um, was it second half? I think he picked up a T early in the yeah. second half, and then midway through things didn't change, and he picked up another, and he got his money's worth. Um, kept yelling at the refs, <laughs> started pumping up the crowd as he left. And from then on is when things really turned around for Illinois. Um, and it's, it started with defense. And that's what the broadcast was saying. That's what I was saying. You got to buckle down defensively and get stops. Just didn't quite get enough of them. Um, I was – I don't want to say I was in a bad place. I was kind of like you um, when that was happening. I was just like – I was quiet and just kind of watching the game it, it, it was just on like I just I was to the point where I was like I don't even care like I tweeted it early in the second half I said this is Rutgers except on your home court there was no urgency there was no fight it, they didn't they were going through the motions it didn't look like they cared on either end of the court Illinois was up 37 to 30 late in the first half Coleman Hawkins was at the free throw line for the front end of a one and one. He missed. So he could have made 39 to 30. He missed the front end of the one and one. And at halftime, it's 37, 36. Ohio State scores the final six. Then they score the first six of the second half, which turned into a 20 to two or 20 to four run with that six from the first half. And that just set the tone. And <coughs> my friends say it all the time in the group chat. This team just gets mentally weak when things aren't going their way on yeah. and runs like that. And it, it just keeps building up and it snowballs. And I think Brad might have noticed that that's why he did that tonight. And it, yeah. it, it worked at the time when it happened, I was like, all right, who cares? 15 point game, five minutes left. I was like, all right, it's out of reach, but yeah. credit to this team. I mean, I was, I was prepared to come on here and be very critical of this team and have these, you know, oh, uh, world is ending, sky is falling type of takes. But this team battled. I mean, Kofi was a non-factor. The refs, I, I just tweeted this while you were doing your, your um, opening there recap. The refs allowed no rhythm to the game. They were bad. They were terrible tonight. But the loss isn't on them. No. They do dictate the rhythm and they didn't allow it any, they didn't allow Illinois to get in a rhythm. Kofi was a non factor. Brad gets ejected. Yet this team without Kofi Coburn comes back from a 15 point deficit and makes this a game with a shot to win. You yeah. got to give this, you got to give the other guys a ton of credit, a yeah. ton of credit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's just, they fought. They fought. Coleman came in there and was huge. I thought Coleman um, was great. That, Coleman was tremendous. Th that's the crazy thing about this team is that, yes, you have Kofi, who is obviously a first-team All-American and a potential Big Ten player of the year, although I'm not sure that'll happen after tonight. Um, and you know generally what you're going to get from Trent Frazier. But even he has had his, his games where he's not really up to par. Um but you just never know what you're going to get from anybody else. You never know who else is going to step up tonight. Obviously it was plumber uh, and down the stretch. It was Coleman Hawkins. We have hardly seen Coleman Hawkins play meaningful minutes. The last, I don't know how many games I thought that we were saw, we were seeing them take turning a corner with Curbelo down the stretch. He was nowhere to be seen in the second half of this game. Uh, if there's, there isn't a lot of consistency, and I don't know that that's necessarily a coaching thing. I think they are playing matchups and playing who's, you know, who's the hot hand and all that stuff. I, I get that, but like you just never know 
what you're going to get out of this team outside of outside of Kofi and to an extent Trent and last game it was Grandison this game it was Plummer and 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 Hawkins and I mean it's they they fought as you said uh, got to credit the team for what they did um, again it's a loss it's a home loss can't really afford those um, but luckily you get two more home games before the season's over um, so hopefully they are able to put together a more cohesive 40 minutes uh, in both of those games and potentially on the road at Michigan too. Yeah. I mean, the three games left on the schedule are winnable games um, at Michigan yeah. at home against Penn state at home against Iowa, Michigan and Iowa are playing a lot better basketball than they were. So they're going to be tougher than we might've thought a couple of weeks yeah. ago, but um, three winnable games still. Um, I, I touched on it a little bit and I wasn't going to go into it, but I kind of want to bring it up. The, the refs, I said, they did yeah. not, they did not decide the game. They didn't. They, they, they really did not. But Kofi got fouled. They called fouls on Kofi, like the defender guarding yeah. Kofi, a handful of times tonight. At what point, and may, maybe tonight is the tipping point where Brad finally says something and brings it up more than he has in the past. I mean, he got ejected because of it. He – and I don't even know that if this is a word, he gets misofficiated yeah. more than any player in the country. Yeah. I know part of it is his fault because every time he catches the ball, he brings it down. Right. He doesn't have, I don't know if it's coordination or what to catch it above and just turn and make a move. He has to catch it, bring it down to his waist. Most of the time he dribbles and that's where he gets in trouble, but he gets fouled every, three out of every four times down the court. Yeah. And I, I wish the, the game stats showed it and it might, I just don't know where to look, how many fouls drawn a player gets at one point he had four, I think it was in the first half or early in the second half, he had four drawn fouls, which seemed very low. I, I just don't know if it's, do these refs not know how to call it or is he just making it look like it's not a foul because he's so big. So when they're slapping his wrist, they're not like, knocking his hands down because he's so strong i don't understand it yeah so a couple things here um one uh you know how they say in football where you can pretty much call a holding on every single play yeah yeah you can pretty much call a foul with somebody against kofi on every single play um so from an officiating standpoint it's a matter of Yes, as you mentioned, Kofi isn't always the cleanest in how he does things. So, yes, a lot of it is controllable type of things. Um, but he's he's just such a different type of specimen that he just requires a different type of way of officiating. Uh, I This isn't an apples to apples comparison by any stretch of the imagination. And some people might listen to this like, what are you talking about? But. I watched my brother play high school basketball a lot. Cameron was comparable in size to Kofi as compared to the rest of the people he was playing against. Yeah. 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 And I, it was often a lot of the same stuff. Like people would run into him. They would fall over and he would get called for a foul. Like that's just, sometimes it's just hard to officiate it because you just, when, when he's that much bigger than everybody else, you have, yes, there are big 10 officials. So you have to think you're not the highest level, but pretty damn near the highest level of officiating possible. So you should think you did, you would think that they should be able to do that correctly, but I'm not an official. Um, I can, I can imagine there's something to it. It's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be difficult to do. Um, the big 10 officiating, I have seen it from every fan base. I have, I follow people on Twitter from a lot of fan bases in the big 10. And I see a lot of them um, complaining about officiating. It's not just Illinois. Um, and I, I, think know that's, of, I think that's my biggest issue with it. Yeah. Is that it's so consistently bad yeah. that the big 10 has to see that they need to fix it. They have to see this because yeah. everyone's complaining about it. Yeah. I think Illinois might just be the most vocal. <laughs> no, I think they are. And I think Illinois 
again, I think this goes back to my theory about Illinois on social media, Illinois fans on social media. I think they're just more vocal, yeah. which is why they come off as probably more whiny. Um, I, I think that's just what it is. But as I said, I, I just, I see this stuff all the time. I see it from Purdue fans. I see it from Indiana fans. I've seen it from Michigan fans. Like it's just, just a consistent thing. And I, I do know that there is, across the country a shortage in officials so yeah I just like everything else i mean they're still they're still people it's still a profession um so everybody wants to complain that every all these officials should be fired well okay then who are you calling up i mean somebody yeah. from the big 12 in central illinois like i mean you know at some point you just gotta accept it for what it is it sucks and it's not been great and they do need to address some things but like it is what it is, you know, some of the stuff with Kofi, yes, some of it is controllable um, and some of it is on him. But as I said, every time down the court, somebody's probably going to foul him, um, when, especially when you have five guys attacking him at one time. Mm -hmm. Like he missed a lot of layups tonight. Yeah, he was uh, he ended up five of 15. He was four and for 12. A lot time. of those layups that he missed, he had like at least three or four guys on him. Yep. at one time maybe yep. there was a foul maybe there wasn't but like that's got to be hard man <laughs> that's just got to be hard i don't care how big you are and how good you are that's got to be hard yeah it's got to be hard to play with. it's got to be frustrating because it gets in your head and yeah. because then you do the same stuff they did to you on the other end and then you get called for it um i venture to say that and this might be my orange showing through it it's tough for someone it's tough for Illinois. How do I want to say this? It's tough for me to believe that Illinois fouls more than the opponents yeah. in any game because of how yeah. many fouls Kofi should draw. And it was 24 to 18 tonight, 24 fouls for Illinois, 18 for Ohio state. Now given Illinois was fouling late a couple of times. So three or four of those probably are the intentional fouls to get to the free throw line. But, yeah. um, but yeah, there was one more thing um, I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember what it was. Um, so, um, long story short, a bad, another bad 20, 15 to 20 minutes cost Illinois another game. But the final five minutes, you got to give this team credit. Without Kofi on the floor, um, without RJ Melendez, might we add, and without right. uh, Benjamin Bossman's Verdon. Melendez uh, had appendectomy surgery. Um, Tuesday night. So he's yeah. probably out a couple weeks. Um, hopefully back for the postseason. Bossman's Verdonk got a concussion in the Michigan State game and he was out tonight. So Illinois shorthanded there. Kofi fouls out. Coleman Hawkins eventually fouled out, uh, but that wasn't until like under a minute left in the game. But credit to this team for fighting back. I was fully expecting to come on here and just be in a mood and all that, but I'm really not. Um, I, I'm I'm proud of the way they fought back. Um, yeah. it's a game Illinois should have won. I think Illinois beats Ohio State six or seven out of 10 times. It's not a great matchup, Yeah, but no, um, it's not, I, it's not, a, it's not a great matchup for Illinois. Um, and I eat my EJ words from my show. EJ Liddell's really Monday. good. Oh yeah. yeah EJ so, Liddell's really good. Uh, I, he won't be the big 10 player of the year. I, I think it's Johnny Davis. As much as I've been anti Johnny Davis, I think it'll be him, but EJ Liddell's really good. Now I will say Illinois did a good job early on in this game and in, in defending him. Um, the combination of DeMonte, uh, I think Coleman a little bit. Um, he, he had a tough time early on in this game. Now we did kind of catch fire in the second half and ended up with whatever, 20 some points. Um, but he, he had a, he had a difficult time in the first half. Um, so yeah, he's, he's just an, he's just a, a terrible matchup for Illinois. They just don't have anybody that can really, really play with him. Um, but I mean, on the other hand. On the other hand, they don't. Ohio State doesn't have no. anybody that can play with Kofi. No, but they don't. The refs didn't allow Kofi to play tonight. So, yeah. so that's where that's at. Um, there it is. Next up for Illinois, <laughs> I mean, we kind of talked about it. Next up for Illinois is Sunday <laughs> on the road at Michigan, uh, two o'clock game on CBS. Uh, Michigan will be without Jawan Howard, but no players will be suspended for that game. All the players served their suspension last night in their win over Rutgers. Anything else? <coughs> No, no. Appreciate the fight. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. As we've mentioned, it, that that this show could have gone a lot worse. That game could have gone a lot worse. Um, at this point, you're just fighting for seeding now in the Big Ten tournament. 
uh, think he can still end up on that two or three line potentially. Probably not the two. Probably the three. I think you, um, you have you have to get the two. Illinois has to win out. Likely has to win out. One of those other teams has to lose twice. Well, yeah, you're right. Twice, yeah. yeah. Purdue or well, Wisconsin gonna, is going to they're lose. They're going to play, each, play other. each other. Right. So that will be one loss, but they one of them would have to lose twice. To, I mean, either way, that I mean, the two and the three would match up against each other in the second round. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're looking at probably a three seed, assuming you can take care of business these next three games. But I think you might look at the four seed now because Ohio State could jump you. Could they have four games left still? Yeah. All right. Well, so it's either. I, guess, I mean, yeah. I guess we could, can run through the standings. I didn't think of that. It could. It, I mean, obviously, could go a few different ways. Wisconsin um, and Purdue are tied thirteen and four. Illinois is twelve and five. Ohio State is eleven and five. Next is Rutgers at ten and seven. So I think those four top four have the double yeah. buy locked up. Yes, correct. for the most part. Um, it's just a matter of who goes where. And yes, like correct. Said, Ohio State has four games left. Everyone else has three. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right, we are going to shut it down for the night. It is already past midnight uh, here on the East Coast, so this will be out uh, pretty soon, but you'll probably catch it on uh, Friday morning a little bit later. But uh, for Logan Lee, I'm Craig Choate. Illinois loses 86 to 83 to Ohio State. Next up, Sunday at noon, we will likely have at least a postgame show for you on that day as well. Thanks for tuning in. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We really so appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Bye.